So recently the internet has made a push for Andrew Garfield to renew and finish his amazing Spider-Man trilogy. My opinion on this is kind of mixed because what these people seem to forget is how bad Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man movies actually were. The Amazing Spider-Man is a cliched mess that's too boring to be considered a high, flying, and fun Spider-Man movie. People crap all over Tom Holland's Spider-Man for not really creating his own problems, but Andrew Garfield doesn't create his problems at all in this movie, or the next one for that matter. The only problem he creates is the subway fight, and that's really it. Everything he does from then on results in him being an asshole or doing something that gets someone hurt and almost or does kill them. You show over Tom Holland for not having an emotional attachment to his villains and having to clean up the mess that Tony Stark left behind, yet Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man is cleaning up the dumb mess everyone else leaves behind. He has a chance to redeem himself at the end of the film by promising to not risk having Gwen Stacy be part of his life, but he breaks a dead man's wish at the end of the movie. F*** you. That's not funny, cute, quirky, or worth writing. That's what an asshole does. He isn't very likable, and he creates the absolute worst Spider-Man suit. Seriously, who thought this was a good idea? The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is somehow worse. A lot worse. If you want to make the case that at least Peter creates Electro, you're wrong. Spider-Man does nothing wrong. Electro gets shot at and blames Spider-Man for it. And then sees the cameras turn to My old friend Spider-Man. And decides that he's going to be the bad guy now. Spider-Man doesn't do anything here. Not to mention Rhino. Peter webs him up in the beginning at the end of the movie. He has a Rhino mech suit the hell? The only real issue Peter kind of creates is Harry Osborn and the Green Goblin. Spider-Man doesn't give Harry his bug because he's worried that it could kill Harry instead of help him and he's worried that it could have negative effects. That would result in him dying and that's just not Peter's problem. That would be Peter's problem if it weren't for the train at the end of the movie with the subway station which pops out from underneath the ground for some reason. And then we learn the truth about the spider blood. Apparently his dad made the spider blood so that only works with people with a dna similarity to his so that means even if peter had given harry the blood it would be his father's fault not peter's if you wanted to have spider-man create one of his problems then why did they include this scene with the train car not to mention the dialogue sucks green goblin just looks terrible the villains are cartoon characters electro makes no sense the ant may subplot makes no sense the peter and gwen subplot is boring there's not enough action for a spider-man movie and spider-man lets people die and doesn't learn a damn thing by the end the only thing i'll give this movie is the suit it's really good it was as close to the classic look as we got until no way home came out and was even better but that that's it now one thing i didn't mention was the acting andrew garfield is a solid peter parker and just a solid actor in general he may be one of the most underrated actors of this age. He should have an Oscar award, and if he does, he should get another because he's really good. I think after Spider-Man, a lot of people kind of forgot about him. But I've seen him around occasionally, and he's still very good at what he does. However, sympathy doesn't coincide with reality. There's a part of me that wishes Andrew's trilogy ended on a good note. But there's a bigger part of me saying, Jake, what is wrong with you? No offense, Andrew Garfield, you're still a great actor, and I can't take that away from you. No one can. And none of this is on you, but by God, your Spider-Man was the worst written out of the three. Not only are you written as a screaming idiot who constantly screws up getting everyone around him killed, you don't learn your lesson at the end of either film. Seriously, the, the, he starts the first movie as a guy who stalks Gwen Stacy and wants to be around her to end the movie as the same damn guy. In the second movie, he starts off as a reckless dickhead looking to crack a joke before saving lives it ends the movie the same way so when i say no to andrew garfield returning as spider-man i mean it completely based off of the writing from previous movies sony knows that they can control andrew garfield's spider-man 100 percent and something tells me that they won't learn shit from the last experience from not having marvel help them make a spider-man flick i mean yeah they turned some stuff around they made into the spider-verse but I just can't accept that idea yet that they're going to be able to make a really good, amazing Spider-Man movie. I mean, they're related to the same company that made a CGI Harold Ravis and sold him as merchandise. How shady is that? Do I want to see Andrew Garfield return as Spider-Man? Yeah, I mean, I was disappointed back then. I was younger back then, too, when they canceled with his trilogy, but I'm older now. I mean, I was so happy to see him on screen, but it doesn't mean I'm going to forgive the past movies of their sins just because he was great in No Way Home. I love Spider-Man. I want to see more Spider-Man movies. I just think because one piece of media made Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man good doesn't overnight make the other quote-unquote amazing Spider-Man movies justifiably good.